Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, Twitchy's career mode, Twitch Tech Industries, where last time we'd actually managed to leave Bob on the surface of Minmus because we didn't take any sort of return vessel with us. So it's time to make that return vessel, and I think at the same time we can start actually getting a few tourists out and about, doing the thing that we originally set this company up to do. So we got a couple of tourists that just literally want to go to Minmus. The next step in my evil plan, of course, is going to be going and grabbing as much science as, as possible at this particular point in time because we do not have things like uh, command pods enough to, to handle three Kerbals or the big enough launch lifters to lift this command pod up and things like that. So that is definitely something we're doing right here. Whilst at the same time keeping my eye further up the table, trying to figure out what the what it is the things that I want. Things like the hypersonic engines and the whole ore scanning process and things like that. Uh, definitely high on my agendas here. So we're trying to pick things that will lead us up towards that. It should be going reasonably well. I'm going to spend a couple more minutes just looking through the tech tree, seeing where exactly it is I want to go. But what we're actually going to do is come out to the uh, VAB and build this monstrosity. Uh, we have up on top the standard three three crew capsule up there. Uh, you can see there's sort of weird strutty structural things on the side. There. That's because I didn't have any strong enough landing legs to support this vehicle. So what I've actually done is used the robotic hinges and your standard uh, strut girder things, the box section ones, uh, to make some legs on the side there. We then put an orange tank underneath. Unfortunately without the main sail it is indeed a skipper because that is the best we've got. And then there are some external tanks there all with the, the, the radial large um, engines on the outside there. I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head, but there they were. Uh, as normal, I've tried to give this vessel a little bit of a personality. You see it's got like two eyes, a couple of ears, some face, stuff like that. Always great. Uh, and up front we've put the slim probodyne core up there. Definitely one of my favourite probe cores throughout this entire playthrough. It, it just goes anywhere, radially attaches. Uh, the person who came up with that, I believe it's from the Cacti Telescope. Well done, I, I love it. It's a brilliant piece. Uh, it should be in the game, really. It should be. We, we need a, a radially attached probe core, right? Obviously, I needed that robotic control up front because we only have tourists on board, at least until we get out to Minmus. Speaking of Minmus, if there's one thing that we've done lots, is it's watch me get out to Minmus. So we're going to jump ahead, taking a small moment to see these beautiful views that I've made sure that we've given our our uh, tourist here and this is what the vessel looked like after we did all our staging okay so after just kind of flying around we have ended up back in the sphere of influence of Minmus and now it's just a case of uh, circularizing our burn and trying to figure out where we're going to come down now obviously we want to put ourselves down as close as possible uh, towards uh, Bob's location over there but first I need to figure out which way I'm going around the planet obviously this way and we're gonna try and get Bob onto the sunlit side because whilst he was turning into sunset and I could have made it at sunset gone down that probably would have been okay we're gonna actually just bring him out into the sunrise like this and make quite a major correction I mean this is okay I think at this point because I'm not exactly struggling for fuel plus there is quite a a repository at the base uh, obviously in the form of all the other tanks and I've managed to bring along a couple of connecting nodes with this this vehicle here for the uh, Kerbal attachment system of course with this being a tourist vessel we do get to have a look at the uh, Kerbin moon system in the background there as we slowly start to make our way down and try and figure out where we're going now you can see that valley across there that we are looking down that's where I'm trying to aim this is in fact the same valley that we came down with the scientific chariot uh, those of you who are watching last episode will, will know that this is our approach here uh, and we're just going to kind of time warp our way down what I'm trying to juggle here is my descent rate and the spin of Minmus now obviously as you can see as I'm coming down the uh, the flats there are coming towards me so I don't want to overshoot but at the same time I don't want to go so uh, so shallow so close to me that I have to end up spending extra fuel to like push myself back up again which unfortunately is something that I seem to do quite often uh, when coming in for a landing I think this is because that I don't really take into account the fact that gravity is constantly pulling me down so I go and line up my markers and then they drift down because that's the way gravity works of course. I don't know why this hasn't lodged into my brain yet. I mean, I've been playing this game for about three, maybe four years now. I don't know. Since, since beta. Like, well early beta. Maybe even alpha. I'm not sure. Um, point one eight, Something like that. 
I'm never really sure. I'm, I'm always so terrible at keeping track of when I start playing games. Uh, the problem is, like, when you start playing a game, you don't realise how utterly amazing it is until, like, a, a year later when you're like, oh, how long have I been playing this game now? It's taken over my life for so long. Same with Minecraft. I had no idea when I started playing Minecraft, but my god, that took over my life. Okay, so we're at the awkward bit of any precision landing here. We're just slowly trying to uh, line up our markers. I'm, I'm mainly flying via the markers. The main reason being... Oh, flying via the nav, nav ball would be the, the, the more easy way of explaining it to people. Uh, the main reason being is when I'm trying to look at the vehicle on the, the main view there, I have no idea how this represents like the WASD on my keyboard. Whereas on the nav ball, I know exactly where everything is, and I know that I'm almost always pointing towards pink markers, apart from when I do horrific bouncy things here so i thought that these landing legs would be more than good enough for holding me down and being sort of impactful and and holding place unfortunately where where they're kind of at a weird angle from each other they're not even so much a weird angle but just long and flexible they kind of bounce around a lot but there we go we have put down our first tourists have made it out as far as minmus amazing stuff Talking of amazing, one thing that does completely astound me every time is how much that I don't look at the things that I'm doing, sort of, or pre-research, I suppose would be the way. So, last time when we were trying to use the Kerbal Attachment System, we found out that, like, all the buttons were different and we had to do things in a very different manner. That, like, when we had the, when we grabbed parts, they didn't go on our back. We had to find a whole new set of keys to do things. And we're about to enter Chapter 2 of Kerbal Inventory System is different from Kerbal Attachment System. So, Bob has gone in and he's grabbed himself a wrench. I mean, there's nothing nothing else that we really need there, apart from, of course, these fuel connecting ports. My plan is to connect this vessel, the one that we just landed with the tourists, up to the permanent moon base, uh, sorry, the, the Minmus base, and transfer some fuel across. Now, of course, as always in situations like this, all my Kerbals need to practice their aer uh, aerobatics and their gymnastics. But once we got that sorted, it's time to just like bust out our inventory and put this on the side with a s simple K. Uh, simple X, sorry. I was like, oh, wait, no, that's not working. I know what it is. I haven't equipped the spanner in my hand, okay? So we'll, we'll, we'll try and put this back in my inventory if at all possible. Uh, if that is possible, could someone please let me know? Because I've never actually been able to put that thing back in my inventory. I've been able to play around with it and like link up to it while it's been on the floor and things like this, but it just never seems to do stuff. And you would have just seen there when I tried to equip the uh, the, the wrench into Bob's hand, turns out that we needed Bill, or at least an engineer of some description. Of course, Bob is uh, our scientist. It turns out he doesn't have any training and even with it just led against the floor there, it's not going to work. So... We're going to have to try something else. Uh, now, I said we didn't have two major fuel concerns. This was because of the fuel uh, depository here. Now, obviously, we don't have access to that now. So that really only leaves us one option. And that is, of course, just to give the return journey a home. We're going to make a quick save on the floor and just, just see if we can get back. We're going to try for the lowest orbit possible so we can take great uh, great advantage of the O-Birth effect. Literally just pushed my way just outside of the sphere of influence because any higher than that, of course, I would then start be pushing my Apple apps on like the orbit of the Kerbin, uh, orbit of Kerbin back up higher and we, we don't want to be pushing up higher we want to be like coming down as low as we possibly can uh, the tiniest slither on my fuel gauge there uh, I haven't opened up my resource panel so I don't know exactly how many like units of fuel I've got left but I know it's not much there we go we can see now it's 58 units of fuel uh, actually at this point in the game with the poodle and just like such a small vehicle to bring back turns out there's quite a lot now the next thing that I was worried about was the fact that this thing doesn't have any heat shields. I just, I keep forgetting to add heat shields. I, I don't know why, um, like, absolute terrible and total oversight on my part. But, you know, th this is something we're going to have to deal with. So, what I'm going to do is set my power apps at about 50 kilometers, give or take. You know, that's enough into the atmosphere to give us some serious uh, slowdown. But hopefully, not enough to actually start, like, ripping my vessel apart. And this is where we're going to go for our first first fly through of the atmosphere uh, immediately I realized that we're coming down just 
just on the other side of sunset, which uh, is quite annoying, actually. I would, I would much rather be coming down uh, in the sunshine. But here we go. We are at 50 kilometers, and we are shedding speed like you would not believe. Up the top there, you can watch my uh, Apple Apsis on the top left or in the, the map view. I like to show that every now and then. Coming down, we're about 19,000 kilometers, which is quite quite a way to go. We've, I think we've just passed the, the height of the moon. In fact, no, we've not even got inside the moon's orbit yet so that, that's a little bit vexing but you know this is the way of things plus it then gives our tourists another chance to see what's going on and we're going to make several passes here because obviously as i say no heat shields the, the the drop rate is quite low at this point i wish i'd actually thought about dropping my periapsis just a little bit lower but i'm about to well i wanted to save a little bit of fuel just in case i needed it at any point for any sort of uh mid course maneuver or something like that that i needed to do so i could have pushed my periaps down just a little bit further but i thought it made a lot more sense keeping hold of that fuel okay so we're going to speed up a little bit here well i say a little bit we're going to speed up here by a factor of like two and a half uh, mainly so we can see shots like this but also because we have three more passes through the atmosphere to make here um okay so one of the things to note here is that every time that I go through the atmosphere, obviously only some of it is on the way out past my periaps. And everything up until that point is actually bringing my periaps down lower and lower and lower. I also spent a little bit of the fuel that I had left um, bringing my periaps out down low. But doing all that swapping around made that my batteries ran out. So I had absolutely no way of controlling my vessel through the atmosphere. And as you can see there, we managed to lose one of the uh, solar panels. Now, we're in a serious tumble here, and I didn't want to do any sort of time acceleration until we could see the sun again, and I could figure out which way I had to point my solar panel to make sure we didn't have this situation next time. Uh, so there we go, that was done. And you can see there on that map view, I know it kind of went past in two frames or something, but as you could have seen there, we were coming down very low towards the... Towards Kerbin now. A beautiful shot of the moon in the background there. I love the way that the, the, the lights, the, the stars, sorry, come in and out of view as you go up and down into the atmosphere. Uh, and all in all, I think this is kind of going okay. The, the, the tourists there really do seem to be loving it. And this is uh, our last pass here. I'm now trying to think, how can I increase my drag ratio? So when we had our tumbly way through the atmosphere, you can see on the front that I'm now missing my probe core and my Kerbal Engineer. So I really want to make it through on this pass because I don't actually have any SAS to hold me straight on this course. You'll, you'll notice that I, I drift past it a little bit and drift back. This is because I'm having to control it manually. Look down on the bottom left there for the your pitch and roll and you'll see that I am fighting this the entire way just trying to keep myself pointed in a retrograde manner so that we don't blow up the capsule this is like my number one concern in fact my number one concern is not blowing up my parachutes uh, I think if I blew up the, the capsule I'd feel a lot better than watching my parachutes blow up and then watching the capsule slam into the floor I think blowing people up on re-entry would be a little bit more acceptable I'm not sure why I think that I just do. So it's around about here that I start thinking of a solution to my drag issue. I think if I can maybe stick these legs out in a close to perpendicular scenario, we can probably in increase my drag and start slowing us down a lot faster. Now, obviously, I have no actual way of testing that in this scenario. Maybe I could set up a whole test rig off in a creative world somewhere or something like that. But, you know, that's not really my, my way of gaming this, this game. Uh, so we're coming down and, well, actually, we're still going back up at this point in time. But our speed is slowing down sufficiently that I that we're not going to make it back out of the atmosphere. Uh, you can watch that needle on our our little altimeter. Is it an altimeter up there? Or the one next to the altimeter that tells us how fast we're going up and down. You can watch that needle start dropping. Uh, indeed, I really doubt that we're going to make it out the top of the atmosphere. Though, once again, I really do wish that we managed to come down on the sunlight side of the planet. But, I, you know, returning from Minmus in a specific place and stuff like that, it's, it's all... I don't know, I've not managed it to date, and if anybody can figure out how to do it, then, you know, let me know. Obviously, I, I need to do it when Minmus is in the sky on the night side, so that when I come down, we're coming down on the light side or something like that. But I, I just don't know how to make sure that gets set up with, you know, bearing in mind my complete lack of patience. You know, I'm not going to sit there on time acceleration and watch Minmus come around to the light side of the planet. I mean, pfft. 
What? So whilst we have managed to shed an awful, awful lot of speed, we are now back up at the 50 kilometer range. And I can tell you, this is not the area where you lose most of your speed. In fact, if you look at my surface velocity there, we are at 2,040 meters per second. That's over two kilometers uh, forward momentum. I mean, that's like totally insane when you take a moment and stop and think about it. I mean, can you imagine traveling two kilometers every second over the surface of a planet? Like at the top of the atmosphere or deep inside it? I don't care who you are, that is fast. But anyway, that little speed rant there has brought us down 10 kilometers into the atmosphere and we're starting to get some heating effects again now. Uh, still, absolutely no way of controlling this with SAS, so we are on manual flight. Bob is doing his best to keep these tourists alive. That plucky little scientist that was really only supposed to go out and collect some data and bring himself back home is suddenly in charge of all these extra people that are totally reliant on him to bring us down safe and sound i love the look of this spaceship by the way whilst we're coming down in the coming down in this atmosphere like this the the, the four struts coming out is amazing one of the things that i have tried to do whilst coming down like this is to make sure that my solar panel is occluded even though we are now completely out of electric charge and we just kind of have to make sure we're coming down as we are i would actually like just a little bit of the money back or something like that there's no real reason for me to want that. It's just, you know, the completionist in me going, no, no, this has to be done like this. All right, so we now pop pop the vessel, and one of my main worries there was this was going to come back and hit me. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Six kilometers off the floor. We get to watch that fall down now. That will give us some sort of idea of how far away the floor actually is. Of course, our two-kilometer mark up there is actually based on sea level. The floor around here is going to be a little bit higher than sea level. Thankfully, on the internal view of almost all cockpits, you get this radar altitude that tells you exactly how far off the floor you are, which is amazing. So, a beautiful touchdown. We're going to go through the loading screen that on my machine takes forever, and and with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I mean, look at those 900 points of science there. Uh, I will see you next time where we're going to spend those and maybe work on some sort of SSTO because we've not had an SSTO yet and I, and I really want one. So I was going to sign off for that bit, but I realised that we have a whole lot more science to buy here. Uh, now, the first thing I'm doing is just trying to figure out whereabouts it is I want to be on the tech tree. And of course, I'm headed towards the uh, advanced sciences there and the mineral collection. Uh, but I also want things like landing gear and heat shields. And if we take a look at the very top of the thing here, I can just about afford to buy the nuclear, nuclear engine. Anyway, I'll see you next time when we're going to do SSTOs. Bye!